Welcome back to the video series on the ICF Code of Ethics. So we are going into part four, which are the ethical standards. And we're gonna start out in section one, responsibility to clients. And today we're gonna to cover the first four standards. So I have with me today, Mirna Perez Piris, and she is from Mexico, and she's going to be talking about this first four standards. She's part of the committee that helped write these standards. Mirna, thank you for being here. Thank you very much, Brighton, for this opportunity. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So let's jump right in to the standard number one. Uh, tell us what coaches uh, need to know about this standard. Okay, being the first standard, uh, is very relevant because this is something that we are very familiar with. This standard used to be the code 18 under the previous ICF code. It has been revised to the wording has changed, and, but in essence, it remains the same importance relating to what is the importance, what's the understanding of the value of coaching, what the understanding the value of coaching, the nature, limits of confidentiality, financial arrangements, and any other terms that might be important in the coaching agreement. And what is important with this is to understand, and this is supported by the inter interpretive statements, that all of this information as to the value of coaching, limitations, confidentiality, and everything has to be understood by all the parties involved, the clients, the sponsors, Anybody that is involved, they have to know and understand this importance relating to the value of coaching prior or at the beginning of the coaching engagement. Because that means that there are, there's clarity of what people are engaging into. And additionally, uh, by providing this uh, information to all the parties involved, it assures that if anybody has any questions, needs more clarifications, it can be done at the precise moment in order to know what the expectations are. So this is a, a conversation that takes place prior, like I said earlier, because it's important to make sure that everybody understands what we're talking about with regards to a coaching engagement. Yes, and the ICF website does list off what is and is not coaching. So um, you can see like therapy and consulting and whatnot. So to consult the ICF website for a list of those other things that we need to be clear about with clients. So let's go into number two now. What do coaches need to know here? Okay, uh, standard number two, this one relates to the creation of an agreement or a contract regarding the roles, responsibilities, rights of all parties involved, uh, the clients, the sponsors. And this also is important to have it in place prior to the coaching engagement itself. And this one is very important that there's complete clarity of the roles and responsibilities from everyone and what is stated in that agreement is essential. Something that the interpretive statement provides that I thought it was very insightful is to clarify that without an agreement or a contract, the coaching relationship is not accepted as established, meaning that is essential to have. Also something that to consider here with regards agreements and or contracts has to do with uh, cultural norms. In different countries, it's uh, they say that they don't. They, you can do a verbal agreement. Okay, it can be written or it could be verbal. The fact is that an agreement has to be in place in order for it to be accepted as established. It's just to understand that de depending on different cultures, things might be different. But ICF really establishes that it's better to have a written agreement because it provides a basis to understanding what exactly are the roles, responsibilities, and everything is already stated in writing. So it provides more solidity in how it could be interpreted. Great. And that's one thing I love about these these new uh, standards is they really have a lot more co cultural competency built in and stress the need for coaches to, to have some of that co competency when working cross cultures. Um, and of course, the, um, the client, uh, coaches can download uh, a sample agreement if they'd like to from the member toolkit. Yes, yes. ICF uh, has a lot of resources in the webpage, and one of them is the member toolkit, in which there they have provided for people who don't have their own agreements. They have like uh, standard agreements to use as a reference. So it's so important for, for to have this agreement. That's why ICF 
has incorporated this in the member toolkit. And members should know that ICF is always providing resources to, for them that they to, so for them to be able to access them. Great, yes, and uh, a great point about the, the benefits of membership too. Part, part of your, your ICF membership are these resources. So um, Mirda, can you go into number three now? Well, number three is, uh, I would say, it's like the basis of coaching, coaching because number three addresses what is uh, confidentiality, which is the basis of coaching from my perspective. But uh, the thing is, uh, this code itself, I will make a little point that it's a lot broader than it used to be because ICF always looking forward uh, and ad adapting to the existing changes in, in the world, they uh, have incorporated things that for us as coaches have to be looking into and keeping our minds to be able to address them. And the fact that the interpretive statements have been created to provide more information, more insight as to how to interpret the standards themselves. In this one in particular, it's very, to me, important to go and read it. Of course, you have the ICF Code of Ethics in different languages in the website. I would suggest that people really go in depth and read all the code, but in this one particular, understand that more aspects are being taken into consideration. Another areas to look into when reading and understanding standard number three is about storage. storage. How do we store uh, documentation, client documentation and everything? Not only ourselves, but also the physical storage itself, what we're storing in the cloud. Also, we're using third parties supporting us. We have to also ensure that they also keep confidentiality. And something else to take into, into consideration is that regulations are always changing and we have to understand what is required from us from a confidentiality basis. For example, at the moment, general data protection regulation, what is required from us, especially if we're working in EU. And something additional that has been added in the interpretive statements, I really recommend you read them thoroughly, has to do with anything that is company owned, like computer, technology, platforms, or whatever. We used to think that we say, oh, we're keeping confidentiality, but if the company owns that kind of equipment and IT has the means of accessing that information, what we thought was private may no longer be private. That's a great point. And especially about the interpretive statements. I think um, the interpretive statements are a living document, so they will be updated. So as things change and as uh, as there's more discussion and you can participate in that discussion about the, uh, the ethics code and the interpretive statements, those will be updated um, as time goes forward. Uh, and also you mentioned that this is important, um, not only for you as the coach, but for your staff. Uh, so the, the code uh, applies to all uh, people associated with coaches, including the ICF staff. Including staff that we outsource. They also have to be aware of the confidentiality. It applies to everybody who has access to client information. And remember, all the parties involved. So we have to, confidentiality, like I said in the beginning, is the essence, the core. So we have to make sure how extensive it is nowadays, how, what it applies to. Great. So thank you. So let's go on to number four. So this is the last one of this video. Um, standard number four, what should coaches be looking for? Okay, this one is, uh, this one used to be code number 25. The wording has changed, in essence has remained very similar. And this one has to do with how information is exchanged. Some issues can be delicate and some things you have to talk about them if the situation arises. And therefore you have to make clear the, in the beginning of the process, and that's very much stated in the interpretive statement before the coaching process begins, if we have to change, share any information, what would be the process? How are we going to do it? When, how, what, the ways in which we're going to change, exchange information. And that's the essence of standard number four. Great. And I think uh, especially when you're working in an internal coaching relationship where you have a sponsor, um, and then of course there's the legal aspects of when you need to share information. So being upfront with that, I, I think is, is just key so that there's nothing that kind of surprises anyone as you move forward. Yes, it's foreseeing that situations may arise in which certain confidential information might be necessary to share, and we are taking the lead into sharing how, when, how, and 
how we're going to address those issues if they arise. And everybody's informed. Yeah. So there's um, um, like if you're if you have a sponsor relationship or legal relationships, there may be reasons that the data needs to be shared. Yes, exactly. That's why it's so important to understand standard number four in which you're clarifying prior to the coaching engagement and clarifying to all parties involved how, what, and how information will be shared. And it's also understanding that sometimes confidential information might need to be shared. And when you go into that next standard number five, it will very clearly state what circumstances may arise in which confidential information has to be shared because it's important to do it or because the law requires it or certain conditions established that you have to do it. Great. Well, that's that's the perfect segue into number five. So uh, thank you so much for, for covering the first four, Myrna. And thank you, of course, for watching and uh, really digging in and learning about the ICF Code of Ethics. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I encourage you to really read the ICF Code of Ethics. And if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you. And as Myrna mentioned, number five, that's the video that's up next. You'll head into uh, the next few videos by clicking up here.